This is a duct tape antenna. And this is me making my first transmission on the duct tape antenna. This is Victor Echo 6 Sierra Foxtrot X-Ray. I am testing a new antenna. Is anybody out there can confirm that I'm hitting the repeater? Most of you are probably sitting there going, is this guy mad? And I would normally agree with you, but just on a hunch, I was watching some of John Portune's uh, YouTube videos. He is W6MBC. If you Google him or go on YouTube, you'll be able to find a whole bunch of really cool information on building antennas. And one of his is on foil antennas. I was making J poles and I was making it out of copper tubing and it was getting heavier and larger and bigger and uglier and it was driving me crazy. After watching one of John's videos, I started thinking, wait a minute, if I can use copper foil tape, all I need is some sort of substrate to hold it. And will that work as an antenna? This will require the handyman secret weapon, duct tape. Follow along and let's find out if this actually works. This is about as simple as it gets. And sure, you can use simpler materials. Maybe you could find a long ribbon or something like that to tape things down to, but duct tape is actually pretty good and it's easily accessible and you can buy it at pretty much every hardware store. Now, copper foil tape, you can actually get at a few different places. Of all places, gardening centers have it. And also, you'll be able to find it on Amazon or maybe an electronics store. In one of John's videos, he talks about the skin effect and how the transmission of the signal actually comes from mainly the skin of whatever wire you're using for the antenna. If you're using a flat piece of foil, it's effectively just an unwrapped version of whatever tube or wire that you're using. Knowing that, I grabbed a quarter inch wide piece of foil and I just laid it down onto some tape. One thing is that for testing purposes that I laid two pieces of duct tape face to face against each other and then put the foil tape on the outside. If you were going to do this on a regular basis or build your own, I'd highly recommend that you have one of the duct tape pieces laid down, then you put the foil tape on the sticky side, and then you lay another piece of duct tape over top of it after you've soldered the uh, feed lines. Here's one thing that John covers in one of his videos, and I thought it was so freaking cool. Now, I've made ladder line antennas and I've cut them too short and you're just like, Arr! because it's really hard to add on pieces or you can, you have to solder them on or it's a pain, right? Here's the thing about foil tape is that the sticky stuff doesn't seem to impede or stop any of the flow. So if you end up having something that's too short, lay another piece of copper foil tape over top of the first one until you get that tune that you want and you can cut it down, but you can lengthen this out infinitely by just adding chunks of foil. Now, having said that, I'm gonna take a little test sample here. We've got some duct tape with some foil tape on it, and we're gonna do our reading to find out you know, what the conductance is. Now we're gonna cut it down, and we're gonna find out what the conductance is, and you'll notice that it's exactly the same. Now, the last little bit of this test is that I throw another piece of foil tape to extend it out to where it was originally, and I do another test. And you'll notice that nothing has changed. You can literally tape on length to your antenna. This is huge for when you want to tune things. In this section, I'm just showing a really quick and dirty way of what I've done to figure out where the feed point is. I wasn't sure if it was going to be what the J-Pole calculator gave me. In the end, it was. But if you use these magnetic connectors where you just have one magnet on the back of the duct tape, one magnet on the front, and you hook it up to a BNC cable, then you're capable of sliding this up and down along the edges of that copper foil tape, and you'll be able to tune the antenna. We have Nano VNA 
saver running right here and we can do some sweeps. So now that we've got this, let's take a look at, I have this quite broad on the spectrum, but like, let's just take a look at, let's go to a 146.8, which is my favorite. And you can see that I'm not really all that great in the SWR or the impedance actually is pretty good. Now what I can do is I can come up here and change things. If I move, now this here is the short leg right along there. And this is the long leg. Our SWR has increased quite a bit, but it's dropped a little bit for that one area. So one thing I realized is that the frequencies are wrong. And this is kind of interesting where, let's just play with the frequency. Let's effectively increase the length of the long element. And you can see that the dip is moving back. We're kind of going the wrong direction. So let's go back up here. Let's shorten effective length of that. There we go. So now at 146, we got, it's, it's a bit too long now. You can see how we've increased it too far. So let's drop it down a little bit. And this is the advantage of using these magnets is that you can come in and once you have the spot, nail it down. Right. So you stuck around this long. I'm assuming you want to know if this thing works. Well, let me show you. This is Victor Echo 6 Sierra Foxtrot X-Ray. I am testing a new antenna. Is anybody out there and can confirm that I'm hitting the repeater? Uh, Victor Echo 6 Sierra Foxtrot X-Ray. <laughs> this is Victor Echo 6 Charlie Bravo Golf. Yeah, you're uh, uh, full quieting into the repeater. So, well done. Over. Do you mind if I put you on a YouTube video because I'm recording myself right now? And here's the reason why. Is the antenna that I'm talking to you on, I can't freaking believe this. It's made out of duct tape and copper foil. Well, it's working. Uh, I mean, the hand airways are public, so yeah, go right ahead. But whatever you're doing, keep doing it because uh, you've got a good clear audio into the, into the repeater over. Victor Echo 6, Charlie Bravo Golf. This is Victor Echo 6, Sierra Foxtrot X-Ray. Totally appreciate you uh, taking your time here. And um, yeah, I'm going to just go and do a happy dance. And maybe listen to the radio for a bit. But I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm a little too overexcited over this, but it's ludicrous. Anyways, thank you again. And Victor Echo 6, Sierra Foxtrot X-Ray, I'll be clear on your final. Victor Echo 6, Charlie Bravo Golf, Roger. Yep, well done. And... Uh... Catch you down block, 7-3. <laughs> Victor Echo 6, Charlie Bravo Golf, uh, clear. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> this is... It's a freaking piece of tape! <laughs> you know, you can often judge a handyman by the number of empty duct tape rolls he has lying around. Dude, I wish you could see this. Maybe you can. I don't know. I I get goosebumps over this because it is so simple. It's crazy. And it's lightweight. You can throw an extended range antenna that's made out of duct tape in your pocket. Final little bit here is having those floating feed points is probably not the best idea. Now that we've figured out exactly where that needs to be, let's solder them down. This is your usual mumbo jumbo. Make sure that you add some flux, heat everything up, and you're gonna find that the copper foil tape takes the heat so quickly that it barely affects the adhesive or the duct tape matrix that it's sitting on top of. So don't worry about it melting through. You just have to touch it really quickly and everything will be good. Final step is to seal everything off with another piece of duct tape. There you go. While making this video, I had a thought. 
I can make a full wave antenna that I can just tape onto the siding of my house and it should work exceptionally well. Might be worth sticking around and hitting subscribe, find out if Ben falls off a ladder or something stupid like that.